What is up, Myth of Empires? We are back. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are getting dangerously close to the 21st. And there's a few announcements, actually. Um, first and foremost, they announced that they will be doing a media weekend for Myth of Empires for content creators. Now, on Fortunately, I don't qualify for this because I am still a very small channel. As you guys can see here in this screenshot, um, Laughing Hunter said that they will be applying. You can apply to take part in the media exclusive early access period. Um, it will take place uh, starting tomorrow um, at 1300 UTC. Uh, early servers will include one server in each of the three following regions, North America, Europe, and Asia. These servers will feature the new map along with 1.0 new content and will have PVE mode enabled. Um, XP experience and current rates will be boosted up to three times the normal rate. Um, content creators, live stream services, close period, blah, 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 blah. So basically, you have to have a thousand subscribers. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I have friends. <laughs> I just don't have a thousand subscribers, guys. It's okay. I didn't qualify for it. Um, I did at least ask. Um, I haven't heard anything back yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if I don't get in. So, but it's okay. It's all right, guys. I was originally planning on playing on the 21st anyways. So um, I did get confirmation back from... Um, Rico, I think it was, um, I asked about getting keys. Uh, he said that they will be giving them out, uh, will be giving some out after the launch. I'm pretty sure he means on the 21st specifically, not the early media weekend. So I'm hoping I might be able to get one, two or three keys that I can give away to you guys in the community um, or to anybody who comes to the live stream and we will do a raffle. We'll give away a couple of keys. If I don't get any, I do plan on, um, getting a couple of keys personally myself, uh, sometime within the first month. And then I will be doing a giveaway and I will be giving away a couple of keys. Um, if I don't get any from the development team and on the discord moderators and all that stuff, if they don't have any keys to give away to small creators like myself, um, that's okay. I'm perfectly fine with that. This is the game that I really enjoyed. This was the game that was supposed to be my channel's, um, <laughs> original kickoff three years to two and a half, three years ago that I built up to. Um, and it just did. Yeah, I was really sad, but anyways, it's back. It's back guys. It's back. So we can, we're going to be back at it again, but anyways. All right. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this one. Cause this is a doozy guys. So they dropped the patch notes for 1.0. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys now, there are over 200 changes between the new content information and the fixes and features and adjustments and everything. They have a list of stuff. Okay. I had to read through it twice to make sure that I understood what I was reading before I did this. So major update notes. It's the first category, but before we go to there, let's read up here real quick at the top. Okay. So obviously myth of empires will have a major update in maintenance on the 19th at zero hundred hours, a few hours before the media weekend for content creators. The full version of the game will be available on the 21st at 1700 UTC. Um, they also did drop a, uh, what is it kind of like a region release time frame um and i will put that up on the screen right now for you guys basically giving you guys an idea of the global release time so if you are in the us like myself it'll be 1200 um, etc so 12 o'clock if you are on the west coast it'll be around nine in the morning if you are South America, Brazil, it'll be around 1400. If you are UK slash Germany between 17 and 1800, um, CET, uh, if you are, uh, China, it'll be around one C 
uh, C, uh, ST. Sorry, I was about to say CTC again. <laughs> and if you are Australia, it'll be around 4 Australian time on the 22nd in the morning. So, yes, that is the rough estimate that they are giving right now. Um, don't quote me on this or them because they might push it back since, you know, Snail Games has their fingers in it now. <laughs> I'm just leaving the door open in case, you know, their track record. But, um, but yeah, so that is that real quick. Um, you can always join the official discord for any more additional information as well as help. There are lots of experienced OG players that are still high alert in the discord that you can always ask for more information. All right. So right off the back, let's jump into this because this is going to take a hot minute. Um, I will try. I am going to abbreviate most of these because if I read every word for word, we'll be here forever. All right, so major updates. Uh, golden token trade posts will no longer be activated. You'll be doing that through Steam Market for skin trading. Um, skins can be uh, used on both dedicated and single player now, which means doesn't matter where you earn them. Um, skin boxes will be dropped by according to player hours. So yes, I was correct in one of my previous videos when I assumed this is what they meant. This is exactly what they meant. You can get random skin drops by playing the game. So, and you can accept these through the store under my account. So yes, basically you can earn free skins by playing the game. And so many hours you play will earn you a free skin. It is completely random. Um, and there are lots of skins, by the way. Um, added idle trading function, drop down bar. Uh, this is for, I think for county stuff, I believe, or for our idle training, not idle tra trading, idle training. Um, uh, there will now be region blocked servers. Um, this will probably work only for so long until people start using, you know, VPNs and stuff like that to move their region. But uh, hopefully they're able to keep this at a minimum for those players that don't want to have to deal with like, you know, the Chinese Zergs, um, which is usually one of the biggest killers in games like these. Um, I've seen it happen in a few others. Um, it gets to a point to where there's just no winning. Um, they just went with shared numbers and lack of skill. All right. <clears throat> okay. So right off the back, let's get into the new content for 1.0. Um, they're adding a filler to the uh, county list. So you can choose between both new and old maps, PVE, PVP regions, and server freely. That way you can just choose the one section you want and not have to see all the other bull crap. All right. Added in-game help pages. Um, added a new map, which we've already discussed about it. Added the new raft vehicle as well as blueprints for it. Can be powered by pigs and wolves. Added the new warship with blueprints for it. Added can be powered by wolves, leopards, tigers, pigs. Um, added new giant lantern and recipes. Um, this can be powered by, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, you earn this through the uh, guild shop. Um, you can also, per I believe it says you can purchase it through uh, the siege point shop. Um, added in um, anti-aircraft uh, and flying. Um, we got cannons, toxic ballistas, uh, flamethrowers, along with uh, uh, certain recipes. Added uh, wooden and clay spiked walls in relevant recipes. Added um, water ball and other relevant recipes. You can now freeze walls, gates, and make them unclimbable. Unclimbable, because originally they said difficult to climb, but this says unclimbable, so I'm curious. Added a food box and recipes, so you can now place food in these food gift boxes and then place them in the market for trading. Um, added the climbing claws to climb. Added the scythe cart, uh, which you saw in the previous pictures in one of my last videos. Um, I'm not going to do it on this one because there's just so many things to go over. So you can watch. I will put a, uh, a link or somewhere in the end of the video that will lead back to the one where I talked about most of the stuff. Um, Added in the uh, material grinding tools, which is basically the little hand push carts that you can swap out for stone, fiber, wood, and stuff like that to farm. So you're no longer using a hatchet or pickaxe and stuff like that. Added in the uh, wooden kite. So the wooden kite launcher and recipes, players can now ride the wooden kite to glide and transport some goods, certain limit. Um, added personal mining uh, building uh primitive sand primitive stone primitive grain primitive wood recipe piles this is the new uh the new resource gathering mines that they were talking about 
Um, this is 100% new to the game as well. Added in a sub page interface for the mini uh, converted buildings. Added in Envoy Factions. Um, so we now can open up uh, through doing NPC camps. This was the whole Envoy system that they talked about adding, where you can send your NPC out to do missions. Um, added skin uh, to certain factions. Um, these skins can be picked in direct, uh, direct, uh, decorations for the base. Added level 50 and 60 pull arm and hammer recipes. Um, I'm so I'm a little confused here. I don't know if they mean 50 or 60 in crafted, or they mean the level is moving up to 60 because there's another point here that's going to catch me off guard here in a minute because they talked about adding level 60 zones so yeah um added um playable musical instruments added flags to and other base recipes for flags for placement um added a storage box um that can hold a single purpose item up to a stack of 10 million um, only one stackable pop only um, added traps tra uh, trap type storage buildings and related recipes um, hidden weapons gas explosions things like that um, added in the smith table and recipes for weapons armors tools throwing objects can now gain um, so basically you can now with this new bench you're able to add attributes and special skills um, to these types of things um, but you can't do it when the durability is zero throwing weapons already have a stack cannot be stacked blah 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 okay um added in combat skills so now you'll have a combat skill that you can press z or k key to trigger if you meet the requirements that's pretty cool um added uh robust um so they added new abilities um forge equipment when equipping the robust via not entirely sure what this one is, but it has something to do with durability. So they added like a robust ability um, that's supposed to help with repairing and durability limit. Because um, I know they said that they were going to make things last longer and you would have certain skills and abilities to basically make equipment last really long and, you know, not take as much damage. Um, enhance uh, mating uh, function from the stables. Successful breeded horses can evolve and inherit evolutions. Um, as well as uh, new horse skills through the enhanced mating. Uh, added active skills for horses. So now you can press Control Q to use an active skill. Um, added skill and animation for animal uh, the animal pens. Um, added skill and animation uh, attributes for animals in the animal pen. Um, so now you can get so now you can get um, like skills like you know increase movement speed. And then if you put that animal into a work thing, it'll cause that thing to work faster. So like vehicles, turrets, ammo, things like that. So it's going to benefit groups that breed really good animals. Um, NPCs now have a chance to drop level seventy forged items and below quality. Um, added daily challenges. Uh, from neutral camps up to five a day added the beast lord gameplay beast lord gameplay um, you can do up to a maximum of seven times per week um, the mystery hunter will appear within a uh, certain marker range um, added beast lord training facility added beast lord abilities to use character weapons and shields added weapon envoy oh added warrior envoy factions for warrior camps can now upgrade rewards through different areas through the neutral camps added relatively skills relative skills to character command talents um added vagrant orders for certain types of pvp battles added siege trial instances added um, rotated battle gameplay and pve could now be announced so you'll be able to do uh, pvp zones will be activated and you'll have to help transport a certain thing within a pvp it's a pve server and there'll be a pvp event that happens on there that will last 30 minutes and you'll be able to take part in it and you have to transport something to a neutral camp sorry my phone just went off um yeah um added beast lord rewards for weekly quests um added factions for training dummies oh added functions for training dummies and targeting um uh let's see added guild deposit uh redemption fun feature um so now you'll have up to seven days to get certain things back you'll also be able to put gold coin or copper coins and stuff like that into the guild box treasury um added a new uh face default for character customization added hide the helmet um so now you can hide your helmet so if you just want to see your face because i know some people don't like the helmet like myself or helmets um added three new emotes added retainer functions so now you'll be able to add uh warriors as retainers so they are decorative purposes around the base 
added signing feature for weapons and crafted stuff. It's glorified bragging rights. And then this is the one that caught me off guard. Level 60 areas within the old map. Because the new map already has it. So now you'll be able to get level 60 rabbits and foxes. Hmm. And that caught me off guard because at first I thought I was like, oh, well, weapons and armor have like level 60, level 70, level 80, level 90 for quality when you're crafting. But this is different. This means that there's an actual level 60 in the game. Now, as far as my brain knowledge goes, because I'm not registering this, I thought 50 was the cap. I'm curious. Um, they added um, a field of vision setting within the game settings. So you'll be able to adjust that. Um, added a preview appearance for decorative buildings, added, uh, um, customized key settings for, uh, free view angle, customized key settings for offhand combat skills, customized key settings for targeting off and on mission tracking, added, uh, game auto reconnection function, added, uh, the lantern festival event, which I'm, I guess we're going to the festival event. And that's all the stuff that they announced. <laughs> Or new content uh that's 58 things uh so optimization so character movement speed increased by 10 percent by default adjusted the carry weight for characters and position if they die um increased the healing skill cap for element increased durability limit for armor for elements and rhinos uh, this is all things that they've changed and optimized large mount stables can now hold mounts even without food copper coins needed to increase to the 450 Breakthrough have been reduced to uh, 3,500. Um, primitive, medium, and advanced scrolls uh, will now be available in the guild shop through copper coins. So basically, if you earn enough copper coins, you can just buy your skill scrolls. Okay. <laughs> um, increase the drop rate of talent books and normal chests. Uh, increase the warning range for the Bronze Bazaar um uh, adjusted the uh duration of a seven day warrior's uh wage um in wells mounted by a warrior empty buckets will automatically fill up that's good adjusted the um activation for pve boundary markers um food decay time for stacked items will reset once you use this the item so if your food's about to decay and you eat one the stack completely resets so it's not like an arc where you know or in this game as well too where when you eat one the one right below that if it's about to decay it just decays so it counts each one as its own individual item and the timer doesn't start on the next one until the one either above it decays or eats or gets eaten that's really good i like that um optimize some of the um proficiencies to allow uh bonus for mid game so you can level up a little faster reduce the amount of skill proficiency for leveling um significantly increase the hunting proficiency which is good because there are some people out like i hated leveling hunting it took so long to level you had to kill so much and then had the fish tons it took forever to level hunting change some recipes for arrows and throwing objects um so now you will craft five instead of three uh, removed restrictions to unlock the uh, workstation food slot um, to once you complete the roasted locust quest which is right off the back of the beginning of the game um, added some new animations for boars wolves and bears uh, improved the attack animation of the grizzly king and step wolf which is the uh, beast lord ones for them uh, they added in some new warrior interfaces tax ranking proficiency for up to 16 counties um, this is for the battle stuff. Adjusted the maximum number of county battles, battles, and fortress battles um, from 30 or they decreased. Adjusted the number from 30 to 20. Balance adjustments to county battles and fortresses. Increased cooldown timers. Um, close gates by 20 seconds and prohibit the use of climbing claws while in them. Um, after a failed duration of war, the county battle and fortress battle. Uh, copper coins will be inherited to use in the next two cycles so you don't get anything unless somebody wins basically optimize server announcements um they're in county battles each guild um can uh, occupy and control only one county um through guild skills you can increase this to three so in the beginning you can only control one until you get the uh guild, the new guild skill leveled up and then you can have up to three counties underneath your guild's control 
adjusted the limit of number of siege weapons that can be modified within a county or fortress manufactured not modified um adjusted taxable rates adjusted tax and the players earning the effect of their income um change the coin minting uh system uh, adjust or increase the um attributes for the planters um i'm not entirely sure what that's all about uh, i guess they're so you're able to do more types of crops um uh, lower the level requirement for common and um the bigger plots from 20 to th or from 220 from 35 that's big actually i always i always hated the fact that you couldn't use the uh the guild ones until you're like 35 because granted it doesn't take too long to get the 35 but it's just such a grind just to be able to use the better ones uh, max uh adjusted the maximum number of guilds within a within one alliance um not entirely sure what they did with that yet because they didn't say what they did as I said, they adjusted it. Um, there will be a cooldown for characters to join different guilds within the same alliance. Um, added a seven day cooldown for guild restrictions. Copper coins can now be stored within the guild deposit. Added a login for personal journals. Optimize uh, method for function faction activation. Optimize combat damage notifications. Batting a ram now do splash damage. Adjusted the decay rate for characters um, in the world below level 10. Um, the number of alliance placed within uh, watchtowers now limited. Um, uh, expanded the PvP protection range for boundary markers. The maximum range between boundary markers was increased to 450 meters. Uh, NPCs can no longer damage buildings within territory flag range. Uh, weapons in the fair battlefield now have combat skills. <laughs> adjusted AFK. Uh, matchmaking, um, adjusted uh, point rules for successful assaults, adjusted the total uh, limit players, uh, construct crafted wagons to 25, optimized cart and wagon rules, adjusted the stacking limitation for vehicle types within the backpack, adjusted boundary marker resource collection um, to be unlocked at 33, 66, and 100, um, daily task 1, 2, 3. Increase the cooldown time for transferring from PVE to PVP servers to 24 hours. Um, I did not see the notification in here about not being able to move resources back to PVE servers from PVP. Like I said, people were saying they couldn't do it in the test play. So I don't know if that was just a test play exclusive thing. Um, remove the level 16 requirements enter pvp adjusted the limits on the number of mining huts built which i believe was three per player so if they adjusted it maybe they lowered it that would be a smart move um adjusted the length of some uh level 60 pull arms adjusted armor piercing damage for two-handed bladed weapons by 10 percent adjusted a five percent slash damage to bladed pull arms um, adjusted character skills breaking blow now has the chance to do damage to block to two-handed blunt weapons adjusted character skill rocks solid now has a chance to resist a portion of damage from two-handed axes adjusted stability and the same thing for two-handed blunt weapons um, adjusted the general skill final strike um, now has a chance to block a certain amount of damage from two-handed blunt weapons okay um, there will be a uh possibility to unlock every faction for unlocking warrior skills okay this one's big by the way number 36 <laughs> okay so dragon npcs the dragon paneled npcs will now teleport back if they are stuck in the same place for too long so all those little box traps people build <laughs> just to get them early game probably won't work anymore um, our, our arrow towers will no longer attack NPCs and animals in restricted areas. Adjusted the durability and durability recovery speed of newly built siege weapons. Balance the effects of blood oath. This one's huge, by the way. Okay. Balanced the effect of blood oath skill for horses, which will now only trigger upon receiving fatal damage. You ever heard the term... Death by a thousand cuts. This basically tells me that unless those, um, if you try to rush into a group of 30 people that are really weak, your blood oath skill won't activate. Because if they're all weak, they'll just go, they'll be burning straight through the player's health. Not the horse. Death by a thousand cuts. That's what I understand. 
So unless the group you're fighting has a really strong player in the mix, the Blood Oath skill will not activate. Which means you'll be taking full damage. That's good. That's really good. So weak attacks or a group of weak players will be more deadly to a Blood Oath Horse Rider than a strong player in a one-on-one. -on -one. You actually have a chance of dying much quicker going up against 10 or 20 people on a Blood Oath Horse, especially if they're all weak. Or do low damage weapons. They could have really good armor, but very weak weapons. And all they have to do is swap it over to a weak weapon, and then they'll be able to kill you. So you have to be very careful on a Blood Oath Horse now. <laughs> <coughs> all right. At least that's how I understand it. Um, change the skill proficiency gain through the drilling grounds. Um, adjust to the type of NPCs that appear during mob attacks. Fix an issue that affects the bonus and affect the prefect it or uh, performance the item usage. Adjusted material quality consumption when repairing equipment of different quality. That's good. Adjusted the crafting material and uh, animation below level 55. Um, change the experience gain for crafting to be uh gained every 30 seconds i'm not entirely sure what that's all about um the seven seasons of tally order rewards will only be redeemed at classic era oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so basically any of the uh tally orders that you've done so if you're anybody who's been doing tally orders this entire time for the past year and change um two years whatever it's been um you will those all those rewards you cannot use them on the new era basically you'll have to have an all new season um for new era season contributed points will now will not be able to be redeemed within the first 90 days of new era there will be a limitation in the classic era okay adjust the duration of proficiency and skill uh, potions um adjusted the color of building um presets uh to blue and red and remove transparency adjusted the chat display to remember the last section channel tab that was logged in um enhance guild name um in the chat box oh um enhance the guild name by adding in brackets for the markers um uh do, 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 do. okay uh optimize the food bar layout um at the drill ground um adjusted the appearance of Let's see here. Uh, interface of items. Okay. Uh, lower the sound when entering the game. Change the login interface and the BMG. Uh, resolution can now be modified in full screen. That's good because I was getting sick and tired of that. It was annoying the crap out of me. Optimize login save method. And then they did a handful of bug fixes. And then talked about dedicated server stuff. You, know, you must type in delete in full caps to delete a character. Um, you know, added a permanent setting max number of boundary markers to owner. Added the uh, permanent change to status value of boundary markers. Stuff like that. So lots of changes, guys. Lots of stuff. I'm excited. It's, it's definitely going to feel. It's going to have that old feel with a lot of new stuff. It's like the rebirth of the game basically they've just they're adding so much stuff that you'll get lost in all the new content unless you're you know hardcore pvp then you're just going to ignore it all and blow through it though although i was watching a buddy of mine during early gameplay um they were doing pvp with the new raft and they were having a lot of fun with that i can't wait to do the warship that's going to be fun but anyways, guys, hopefully this um, rundown, I, I apologize for the uh, the shortness of some of the things. There's just so much here. It would take me an hour if I read through everything individually, word for word. Um, and I didn't want to drag this on too much longer. But hopefully this helped you guys out with all the stuff that is coming to uh, Myth of Empires as well as all the changes. Um I'm excited, guys. I will be playing on PvE server in the beginning, like most people will be, at least for a good portion, um, because I will be setting up uh, with another group eventually to do a kind of like a trade system with them. 
uh, cause I like doing that kind of stuff where I do farming and things. So yeah, uh, I do have a handful of people that will be playing with me. Um, if you are in the community and, uh, or you are new to the myth of empires community and you're looking for a casual farming group that, uh, wants to also do PVP on the side, or at least farm for PVPers, or you only want to do kind of like a trade guild, like I'm going to be doing, you are free to join up. You can always join my discord. Um, other than that, guys, take care. Have fun, and I will see you guys out there on the 21st when the server is officially open to the community. All right, guys, peace out. See you later. Bye-bye.